Welcome. In this session, we will talk about the tertiary sector, sector activities. In the previous classes, we have talked about what are primary activities, secondary activities. So, a quick recap. When we say primary activities, those are the activities directly driven from the nature or where you directly interact with the nature. For example, agriculture, mining, fishery. So, all those are primary activities. When it comes to secondary activity, you are trying to use these primary resources to manufacture something and therefore manufacturing industry is something that falls under secondary sector activity and the tertiary, act uh, tertiary activities involve services so those could be lower order services for example uh, the requirement for a carpenter barber for the household works then you have a higher order service which can be in the form of doctors lawyers engineers professionals so those are the higher order skills now, what is a basic difference between a secondary activity and a tertiary activity? Under a secondary activity, you have a tangible goods that are produced. However, under a tertiary sector, you have services that are given. So that's one of the major differences. Then, one of the another important differences, under tertiary sector activity, you have skills, expertise and knowledge that is primarily important to understand for the formulation of a lower order or a higher order tertiary skill. Now, whatever services there are, we can classify those under three criteria. The tertiary services which we would be discussing today. Then you have quaternary and quinary. Quinary are highly specialized jobs in the form of consultants, policy makers, quaternary services involve research and development and information based services. Then you have the tertiary activities. Now tertiary activities could be easily classified under four heads. Trade, then you have the transportation, you have the communication and the services. When we say trade, this trade could be a wholesale trade or a retail trade. Retail trade means the consumer is directly buying the product. Wholesale trade means the person is supplying it in bulk quantity, let's say to another industry or some important big office or a firm. Or he is supplying to another uh, unit which would be supplying it to a retailer. But the main idea under wholesale is there is not one or two products that are sold but a group of products, a bulk of products. So 1000 pieces, 10,000 pieces are supplied. So that's what is wholesale market. Be it a wholesale market or a retail chain, both of those exist both in rural areas as well as urban areas, that's for sure. In the rural areas, we have periodic local markets that are held. So it could be every Wednesday, every Friday, and these are known as heart bazaar or heart markets. These are the local markets where everything that's required could be availed. The next is the transportation. Transportation could be railways, roadways, a recent revamp in the roadways is the Bharat Mala Pariyojana. Then you have airways, a recent revamp is the Udan scheme and the uh, waterways where you have the Sagar Mala Yojana. Now this waterways could be an inland waterway or an oceanic waterway. Inland is within the country and oceanic is cr across the uh, borders or moving to another country. So let's say this is the map of India. Moving from India to UAE would be through an oceanic route but moving from let's say Uttar Pradesh to West Bengal through the Ganga River would be an inland navigation. Then under communication you have the telecommunication which is started with telephone. From telephone you now have mobile phones. You have uh, the radios that moved on from audio to visual. So you had the televisions and now with satellite communication internet you have a further change in the digital era that you can see. Also you have the personal services, professional services that are there. You have numerous role players. It could be in the form of banking, insurance, real estate. It could be private players, it could be public players, it could be NGOs. So all of those form the service sector we can say. Now, as we said, trade is an important component. So under trade, we have stores. These stores could be classified under three categories. These could be a consumer store, a departmental store, or a chain store. So chain is considered as the most economical and it reaches directly from the manufacturer to the uh, consumer and therefore it's considered most economical highly skilled 
specialties are involved in it. So those are the three categories. Consumer stores are directly the FMCGs where you can get departmental stores are where you have uh, each category that's there within the store and different sections in the store where different products are being sold. The next is transportation. As we already talked about transportation, the four types of transportation, that's something that you have been reading from the very beginning. Now what's important as you move towards class 12th is the concept of isochrone. Isochrone is a term that denotes the time taken to cover the distances. So let's say I join places with equal time taken to reach them on the map. So let's say from point A, if I take 5 minutes to reach B, 5 minutes to reach C and 5 minutes to reach D, these B, C and D could be joined with a line which is known as an isochrone line. Similarly, the network which we would study further in the under higher classes in transport geography. Some of the lectures have already been there. So those are the networks. Now these networks are considered with or made up of nodes. Now what are nodes? Nodes are the points where the routes are coming in. So let's say you have two routes or a route that is joining the two node. Now this node is what is known as or this route is what is known as link. So there are nodes, the path that joins the nodes is what is known as link and that's important to understand. Now a developed network has numerous links which are very well connected and another important aspect to understand is when you talk about the demand, the demand for the transport is directly influenced by the size of the population. Higher the population size, more the people living in an area, there is more demand for the transport. There would be more buses flying into the city. There would be more uh, development. There could be metro development that could take place. So everything works with the demand. And demand comes through population. Now, the next important thing is the routes for the transport. Now, these routes or routes, what we say, depend on numerous parameters. This could be the climatic condition of the region, the topography of the region, the hilly terrain or any obstacles that are there and the opportunities for trade. That's another very important aspect. So if there are higher opportunities for trade, there would be better connectivity, better routes that would be developed. So those are some of the important things that we need to understand under transport. The next is communication. Communication is just transmission of information in the form of text, in the form of message, in the form of voice, in the form of video. So this could be audio visual, this could be through newspaper, print magazines. So there could be various ways under which you can communicate with others. Then we talk about telecommunication. Previously it was in the form of telephone, telegraph, Morse technology. Later on it shifted to mobile telephones and then you have radio, television from audio, the radio, you have audio visual that was television. We moved on to satellite communication and later to internet. So we talk about digital world where we bring in internet as one of the major paramount means of communication in today's era. So there has been a drastic change in the way communication is being done. However, all of those medias or the mediums still exist and are important for communication to take place. The next important aspect under this was services. So as we said, the services could be lower order services, which could be as grocery shops, laundries. There could be higher order services, which could be in the form of teachers, lawyers, doctors, consultants, physicians. Again, services could be regulated. For example, fire department, highway management, you have call centers, so all those customer care, all those are regulated services. Again, we have professional services which include healthcare, engineering. The most important aspect is within the city, you have a CBD. CBD is a central business district. Around this central business district, you have the uh, services that prosper. The cost of the land closer to the CBD is very, very high. As you move away from the CBD, the rate of the land decreases and as a result, you have lower order services or low cost services, which we could say would be easily available in the peripheral market. These services could be formal uh, 
formal services which are we can say organized services or these could be inorganized or informal services informal services a very good example is dhaba wala so that's a informal service and if we look about in the scenario of the world it's fast evolving in india it was predominantly agriculture but we have been moving to services if we talk of america we have nearly 75% of the people which are involved in service sector economy so there has been a shift in the economic front across the countries the next important aspect is tourism tourism has been one of the major services across the world in india we say it's not only domestic tourism but it's also international tourism new concepts have been coming up in tourism for example we are now propounding on rural tourism developing the rural areas for example sulakashi in assam known for handloom similarly you have patan in gujarat known for again handloom industry so the, you have various centers which have been developed again the next example is medical tourism previously India was not a hub for medical centers but of recent the statistics have revealed a lot of medical inflow is coming in with better medical facilities better uh, diagnosing technologies ultrasound mri being developed you have a lot of scope for medical tourism in india the next is natural tourism with hilly terrain scenic beauty adventure tourism is another aspect you have golf tourism where golf sports have been built uh, the idea is to develop the region so bringing in better accommodation facilities good transportation good connectivity better meals better food facilities uh, opportunities for entertainment and more shops so that's the sole idea under trans uh, tourism industry then when it comes to quaternary as we already said you are focusing on research and development so advanced technical skills specialized knowledge and sometimes we say it's administrative competence that is required it could be in the form of uh, statisticians it could be as software developers tech consultants so all these fall under quaternary services and the last is the quinary services which is the highest level of decision making now creation rearrangement and reinterpretation of the existing facts and data or ideas is something that's being done under quinary activity so policy formulation business executives decision making bodies uh, scientists or legal consultants are part of quinary services we also talk about one important aspect in india that's outsourcing industry with most of the population being well versed in english you can say you have a global footage as a result you have the outsourcing units which are being established because of cheap labor in india and skilled workers so you have skilled workers and cheap labor as a result you have outsourcing industries or call centers being established now a good example is a uh, knowledge processing outsourcing which is known as kpo kpos are distinct from bpos which are business processing outsourcing now kpos or knowledge processing outsourcing require highly skilled labor because they are knowledge driven they can create additional business opportunities so r and d e learning business research legal professions are all part of kpos however bpos are uh, confined to manufacturing engineering and services later on we also talk about medical tourism which has been growing and flourishing in india so you have hospitals in uh, mainly india switzerland and australia which are home to a lot of medical tourism across the world because in some of the countries the cost of medical uh, is very very high so they move on to the countries where the cost of medical is not that high but the quality is at least at par so those are some of the major developments that we have seen the major schemes that have come up are also important as we have discussed across the lecture and we'll be discussing the remaining topics of human geography in the upcoming lectures so stay tuned have a wonderful day ahead